industrialization and commercialization, they are the copious use of water, energy, and other raw materials, transforming them into goods and services, retarding the waste in the environment in the forms of emission and unusable solid waste. India's urban areas represent a torturous problem regarding the physical environment, in particular the increasing quantum of municipal solid waste and its management has acquired alarming dimension in our country, especially over the last decade. And the objective of my paper is commercial, industrial and institutional use. India's condition of collection and transportation of the solid waste and the point out the factors responsible for the poor performance in the task of solid waste management and the laws and the initiative to mitigate its impact. The problem of the problem of municipal waste management has acquired alarming dimension in our country, especially over the last decade. Previously, the waste management had was hardly considered as an issue of concern of the waste could be easily disposed of a country environmental safe manner. However, at the time, due to the changing lifestyle of and hard practice in Asia after the China and Japan, while Bharatir energy attracted মানে নিরাপত্তার জন্য ভারত এই সংগঠনের সঙ্গে যুক্ত হতে চাইছে কারণ আমরা জানি যে এই অঞ্চলের রাষ্ট্রগুলি বিশেষ করে কাজাকিস্তান ইউরেনিয়ামের দিক থেকে দ্বিতীয় স্থানে রয়েছে রাশিয়াতে প্রচুর গ্যাস এবং তেল আছে তুর্কমের স্থানে প্রচুর গ্যাস তেল আছে এইটা চাইছে এখন দ্বিতীয় প্রশ্নে আমরা যদি যাই যে এই সংগঠনের সদস্য হওয়ার শর্ত বা পদ্ধতি কি ভারত কি পঞ্চমত যে সেই রাষ্ট্র কখনোই ইউএন স্যাংশনের অধীনে থাকবে না ষষ্ঠত সেই রাষ্ট্রগুলি কখনোই আর্ম কনফ্লিক্টের সঙ্গে যুক্ত হবে না সপ্তমত তাদেরকে একটা আনুষ্ঠানিক আবেদন করতে হবে এই সংগঠনের কাছে সদস্য পদ লাভের জন্য এবং অষ্টমত যে বর্তমান রাষ্ট্রগুলি সহমতের ভিত্তিতেই সদস্যের নতুন সদস্যের অন্তর্ভুক্তি হবে এখন ভারত কতটা এই শর্ত পূরণ করতে পারে সেটাই দেখা এখানে আমি যদি বলি যে ভারত এই অঞ্চলের কাছাকাছি রয়েছে এবং ঐতিহাসিক একটা যোগ রয়েছে সেন্ট্রাল এশি বা এই অঞ্চলটাকে বলা হয় এক্সট এই রাজ্য রাষ্ট্রগুলির সঙ্গে রয়েছে এবং একটা মনে রাখা দরকার যে আইনি এয়ারবেস ভারতের বাইরে প্রথম একটা এয়ারবেস যে ভারতীয় ল্যান্ডের বাইরে এই তাজিকিস্তানেই তৈরি হয়েছিল আইনি এয়ারবেস তৃতীয় যেটা ভারত অলরেডি অবজারভার স্টেট চতুর্থত ভারতের সঙ্গে এই অঞ্চলে ট্রেড এবং ইকোনমিক যোগাযোগ রয়েছে ভারত ইউএন স্যাংশনের অধীনেও নেই ভারত কোনো আর্ম কনফ্লিক্টের সঙ্গে যুক্তও নেই এবং অফিসিয়ালি ভারত আবেদনও করে বর্তমান সদস্য রাষ্ট্রগুলি যদি সহমত পোষণ করে তাহলে ভারতের অন্তর্ভুক্তি দ্রুত হয়ে যাবে এখন তৃতীয় প্রশ্নে আমরা যদি যাই
for her husband. Sir, Bolun. Bolun. The notion of Adra Mohila in the moment, Shahi Bibi Kola. Shahi Bibi Kola at the Kondash, the Bolun play. Cinema shoot the Shahi Kondash, the Kondash Tikara, Marga Chodi Kedichi. The Kapana Chakra is cinema popular, going down to popular, going down to popular. कौन जितना खोट हो ना चला तो क्या तो कौन खोट हो ची एक अभिषेक शोरी इतने जोर ने बोशी चोरी इतने जो कोरी नाम का बोलता है चोरी अब तो कोटे शोरी कोटे शोरी में जो छोटो को एक बहुत बारी एक कोरी की बारी छोटो को कौन शे जो कोरी नाम का चला कोरी नाम का बोलो जो कोरी नाम का जोर ने इस I read 
uh, three very interesting uh, two books and uh, two, art two articles on book. The book is very well known, Tanti Vajpayee's and Siddharth Vallabhrapu's book that International Nations in India bringing theory back home, where they were talking that really in India we cannot claim that we have a theory of foreign policy. There are other theories of international relations, but no theory of foreign policy as such. And then again, there is another book by Yomita Mattu and Hakimov Jacob and India's foreign policy people's politics and places, where there is an interesting article by T.V. Paul and Mahesh Shankar, the understanding theoretical uh, dimension of Indian foreign policy, where they categorically examine the defi deficiency of classical realism, neoclassical neorealism uh, in understanding Indian foreign policy. Now there is another article, and this is also Professor Amartya Mukherjee's article in one book of Rajkumar Kothari, where he, at the very beginning of his article, says that Indian foreign policy needs reshaping, and there must be a role of theory. But he also states that there is no theory at all uh, uh, in, in, in place in India. Always there is a there is a connection that a good definition can lead to good theory. So one should not be hurt uh, by the fact that well I am not giving a good theory. Uh, so one must imagine, one must ex extend the level of imagination and abstraction to try to formulate a theory. The next thing what Rosenau is very, uh, very vitally, Rosenau says that one of the prerequisites is to ask a question, what is this of an instance? What is every, every issue, every issue is interconnected in this complex world and one must, be, one has to formulate a theory, one must say that well, what is this an instance? So this is two very important things which I take from Rosenau's nine prerequisites. And then I come back. My faith thesis is, is on uh, understanding the position of the Marxist political party on Indian foreign policy. Now as we all know that both realism, liberalism and Marxism are grand narrative. They are the macro theories. Now when we talk about, now we talk about, and then we have some micro theories as well, like constructivism, so critical theory, which talks about identities, which talks about setting. So there are two groups of theories. One is the grand narrative theory that talks about the understanding the entire system. They, they have a grand vision. So these are one group of theories. Grand narrative. There are other group of theories which talks about the setting. Where the theory is placed. Who are constructing the theories. Robert Cox, for instance, said that theory is always for someone and for some purpose. So we must understand that who is formulating the theory. Now, in the literature of Indian foreign policy, theoretic, with the literature that searches theory, they will say that, well, theory, uh, in, in Sarah's article also there is there that they are always thinking mind frame of the decision maker that are going to have the foreign policy. Also important is the landscape, where in which situation foreign policy is being made. So these are the two kinds of theory, uh, social setting, so the setting is very important and also the cognition, who is doing the foreign policy making. This is two, two very important things. Now my question is that if we have to, and, and then again, if T.V. Paul and Mohesh Shankar talks about a solution theory is of neoclassical realism as an eclectic approach, but there is another very good book in 2009 publication, which is by Riefsman, Nobel, and Telafero, who talks about neoclassical realism, state, and foreign policy, where they claim that, well, our attempt is to bridge between classical realism and neorealism, but nevertheless, we remain within the boundary of realism. That, 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 that very essential, we talk about power of our country. That is very essential. Well, we generally believe that we must connect the domestic sources and the foreign uh, external sources in formulation of a foreign policy theory, which is the basic premise of neoclassical realism. But these three very important proponents of neoclassical new realism, realism that are a rich man and global, they actually talk about that they are remain within the boundary of realism. So my question is, if Neoclassical realism remains within the boundary of realism, more or less. And then we do not have a theory of uh, foreign policy in India. Where do we move on? Now, I place my own PhD uh, thesis for some of the portion that I interrogate the Marxist party's approach. The Marxist party's approach to Indian foreign policy, how they have this in. And they have actually, as I see, they have, now if I bring Rosanna, that what is this of an instance? The Marxist parties would constantly say that each and every state of Indian foreign policy is actually determined by in the post-Cold War by its relationship with the United States. So they always critically negotiate by Ashish, okay, Ashish mystery. Uh, politicization of ethnicity in Nepal. And now sir. First of all, uh, <coughs> I would like to thank Critical Science Association and uh, Honorable 
chairperson and uh, my colleagues and sirs uh, for giving me this opportunity to present my research. Uh, it is a part of my PhD thesis, in fact, which is underway and uh, my film is Nepal. So, today's topic is politicization of ethnicity in Nepal. <laughs> आवारे दुर्गो के बारे आपने क्यों लिखे थे? एक तो उसे पार्लियामेंटरी इलेक्शन ऑफ़ 2014 जिन्हें आपने कोलिशन करें इसके आवारे वन डॉलर पर केस थी आदित्य जो आप इशू में आपे जाते हैं ऐसे आपने जी पेपर ये जो शॉंग शोधियों का उस तरह दिमाग को लेने के लिए विरोधी दलों ने Thank you. 
হতে রাজনৈতিক দলগুলো স্বাধীনভাবে খেলতে পারে এই যে এই যে আমি স্বাধীনভাবে আমার মতো
Sarah one more. Mystery. Yes, sir. Only one question. Right. Go on, go on, sir. You are the only one. <laughs> yeah, purpose that uh, its primary purpose is to uh, free flow of information amongst the South Asian, South Asian nations. But uh, as we have seen that uh, SARC is lagging behind in comparison to uh, European Union, and we can't ignore the fact that uh, we are living in such a region where the topographical or uh, in every sphere heterogeneity is prominent. So do you think, and political compulsions are there, because I think in South Asian nations, uh, we are the only one to have successfully continued democracy that we can exem exemplify ourselves. My question is, free, free flow of information, is that really possible easily? Indian foreign policy can be analyzed from various theoretical groups. Now in the post cold war period, uh, my basic focus was on the post cold war period. And in the post cold war period, the theory that you are talking about has become much more popular. Yes. Uh, so this is a new category, new dimension of theory. Now I give you an instance. Constructivists would say anarchy is what states My question, my submission was there. So I have two, three submissions. Number one, you have to understand my position. My position is that there are theories of international relations, but there is no theory of foreign policy. International relations treats foreign policy as a state child in the entire discipline of political science, either of political science. So, Rosanna would say that it, 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 it doesn't get any focus. So, you have to understand. This is my first position that we have to build the theory of foreign policy itself rather than other theoretical paradigms or from taking bits and pieces from theoretical paradigms of internationalism. Number. Number two, speaking specifically about constructivist approach, in the post Cold War period, if you say, say for instance there is war on terrorism, war on terrorism. So this is an analytical situation. Who, which states will go in which state of either who should say you are class of terrorism? So now Indian say what what is made of the analytical situation? It told that we are with the democratic forces of the world. So this is so, so that means that now who is taking this decision? The decision makers. So their cognition is involved. Also, in which condition they are taking? If say India Pakistan relation, again an analytical situation. So how India make of this analytical situation? They would say, well, we must deal with Pakistan, but not in a hurried way. We we get engaged. For instance, you say that India has continued to continue with its dissensions with Pakistan, with China, it does not solve. As a result, Indian foreign policy has this anti-Pakistan and anti-China dimension. And as because it has had the Marxist political parties, which I am I am willing, they are actually trying to appeal that you solve your problem, you, you that is analytical situation, what states make of it. So states are making that we are with the forces like democratic forces. So it is making a very foolish understanding of the electors. Obviously, we didn't see that one. But Sapma, one to say that Sapma at least tried within various sorts that Sapma established in the year 2000 and SARC established in the year 1985. So there are a lot of barriers uh, that is official secrets act and network uh, in technological infrastructure and illiteracy. So still, all media houses of uh, this region are basically have uh, has its own political inclination. Uh, they are influenced by polar fundings and, and any way influenced by any political parties like Chopish Gandhi and ABP Ananda. Some are at least trying. They don't agree. Yes, sir. They don't agree. Uh, um, Executive the objectives of Sama for the uh, for this region. Uh, but uh, if we compare with uh, Asian or European India. They don't have that democratic form of government that we have. So they always apprehend how India's democracy very in China, rest of the South East uh, emerging global power, and uh, India is far stronger than us, be it in the form of economy, be it in the form of politi pol political sphere, like our democracy, whatever. So these groups are now presenting, okay? 
kind of nati or nati dialogue. I can tell you things, and others are also there. So I think that this uh, West Bengal Kolkata Association is a good forum for youngsters, youngsters for trying out their hand okay, at scholarly presentations. And for that, we will have to remember certain things. So you know there are seven. So many of the speakers may be quite a little disappointed to search and some. Because 20 minutes is international standard time. Whatever you do, you will have to make it in 20 minutes. Sometimes some people give you five or something extra. But all of them, I don't read out. Reading out spoils the presentation. Completely. Because when you see, when you speak something, we want to see your face, your expressions, how you make it. No, it would be sometimes that you look at it, look at it, you don't have to memorize. Anyway, you won't find, you say, many books on punctuality. Another thing, don't speak, quote, unquote, Shridhoi Teki, he has said. Speak from your mind. But it will be there always, you'll have to keep it in check. Now, you said, while there have been France and England, okay, uh, 1763, you say, no? 57 to 63, seven years, what? 1756. Uh, 57 to 63. 57 to 63. 57 years, what? 56 to 63. So, 7 years, one. They have caught up to that. That is usually the wrong statement. That was the colonial war. Carl W. Deutsch calls it. Call okay. Here, peaceful coexistence is possible only when both India and China think, think it is there in their interest to temporarily live in peaceful coexistence and expand peacefully till they come in. So that's the problem. Don't mind. I am not. I am not. I am not so famous. I love Bengali as many of my students know. Like anything, but its reach is limited. You should immediately practice speaking. Okay. Sir, you can both the words. I am not the one who can both the words. Rework it and focus on the questions limitations. Okay. Sapma is a particular aspect of sir. Okay. Uh, also, uh, cultural uh, also area. So, uh, about what do you think? What do you think? I did in Germany the time. So, I did it because, you know, they say theory is the intelligent man, intelligent man substitute for empiricism. I did understand one thing. First, in 1975, all the approaches, Approaches from a structural perspective, approaches from uh, an agency perspective. So I, I, I uh, uh, yes, I need to want to come out and all that. The three of your work. Now, these I see and constructivism.